Electronic Mystery Machine. What is this thing? I have to tell you though, this has got to be one of the best looking pieces of antique electronics that I have ever seen. Look at the character in this thing. The face is on an angle so that it's you know perfect for the operator, whoever is using this thing. It looks like a locomotive and it's just ready to go. They put such class into the design of this stuff way back when. In this video, we are going to open this thing up, tear it down essentially, and find out what this thing's function was. If any of you out there recognize this thing, know a name or a model of it, please definitely leave that in the comments below. I'd love to actually find some literature on this device. So join me in this adventure. Let's open this thing up and figure out exactly what it does. Let's take it apart. Here's a closer look at the face with all of the knobs and switches and dials and everything. We have a very nice looking radio type dial in the center here in what looks to be a, an oscilloscope type CRT in the top or some form of CRT. And there is a hint of what this could be written right here. See if any of you can figure this out. So I'll zoom into this. So this is what I got out of this here. So possibly industries are maybe I E S right here. And then right here, it looks like O P E like scope, something scope. And these orange lines here. Now what's really odd is you can see the, the bezel here that would be around the CRT. It looks like the lettering goes into that bezel. So is maybe this factory or not? So kind of odd, right? Because if you look at how the lettering goes, it looks like it would get buried about right here, right? Underneath this you know, rubber ring or what used to be rubber at any rate. So yeah, if any of you can make anything out of that, feel free to pause the video and stare at it for a while and figure out exactly what that thing is. So there is some writing on the front here uh, on some of the different jacks. So what I'll do is I'll move this down here and get you a little closer. So. This looks to say high PF output, so high picofarad output, and low PF output, so low picofarad, so maybe heavy coupled and lightly coupled outputs. Uh, it looks like it has SO239s on the front of it. So I don't know whether those have been added. If you look on the other side, there's uh, some over there as well, right? And this one here has what looks to be a grounding plug stuck in one of them. Has maybe a headphone jack for monitoring with a headphone and an RCA that, I don't know if that's factory or if it's been added. If somebody added that, it boy, it sure looks like a nice job. So lots of crusty feeling dials. Does this even move? Oh, it does. Look at this. The actual dial moves. This is how fresh this thing is. I haven't even tried this out. I saw this. I immediately had to pick this thing up and I've done nothing with it. I brought this right back here so I could share this entire adventure with all of you. So kind of a neat device. This is just too neat not to share, right? So yeah, the dial actually does work. Boy, is it ever hard to move, but yeah, it does work. And the fine works too, the little fine tuning knob in the center. Very, very neat. So gear reduction tuning type mechanism there. There's not enough of much of the writing left. So the backstory on this thing is, this was found in a barn the person that I picked this up off of found this in a barn years and years and years ago. And when he got it, this thing was absolutely coated in owl crap, he said. So it was right in the top rafters and he cleaned this up about, I think he said 20 years ago it was. And he thought this would be very neat garage art. So he brought this home, cleaned it up and just stuck it on the top shelf of his garage in his shop. And it's been sitting there ever since. So a little bit of the dust and debris and all that stuff that you see on here is uh, probably all maybe from his shop or maybe it just ha wasn't cleaned thoroughly. Maybe he wanted to, you know, have that patina type of look on it. I, I really don't know. So that's the backstory on this and that's all I really know about it. So let's take a look at the knobs on the top here, see if we can see anything else. The knobs on the other side and let's go inside this and uh, see what's hiding inside. Here's a better look at the side profile of the unit. You can see the face on an angle here and how it kind of goes back. Again, it has this look like it's on the move almost. Very interesting design to this piece of equipment. 
Here's a better look at the knobs on the top of the device. As we can see, there's five knobs up here, but no lettering or anything left. Quite a thick coat of dirt on this as well. So, that's solid, whatever that is. Oh. So some form of a multi-position switch. I wonder if that one is, oh, it is too, but it's just extremely stiff. So multi-position switch. Easy movement with that one and easy movement with that one there. There are more on the other side. Here's a view from the back side of the machine. So this is the row of knobs that we just looked at and this is another row right here. Now, this one here does move, but very difficult to move. This one here is C solid. C solid, so maybe the weather side right here, who really knows. On the back, it looks like there is an access panel of some sort right here with some thumb screws. Oh yeah, they're coming loose. All right, I'll reposition the camera. Let's take this off and look inside. Felt like a spring pushed on that. And it did. Hey, look, it's safety in the late 30s, maybe early 40s. So safety switch. So let's see, what are we looking at here? So we have a rectifier tube here and oh, look at this. So this would most likely be the rectifier tube for the CRT up in there. So what they've done is when you open the back up, this most likely cuts the power to the power transformer back here, which is actually kind of odd for back then. Usually they didn't do any of this. It was just way back when it was expected to know that, you know, you power the thing down before you service it. But you can really see what's going on. If you look back up in there, you can see more tubes up in there. So if somebody wanted to replace a tube, they'd probably end up reaching their hand in here and you can see what would happen if they made contact between these two areas, right? So this supplies the elevated voltage for the CRT and that would be quite elevated, probably around maybe negative 1500 or something like that. So yeah, probably a 2X2 possibly, maybe a 5R4, something like that. Looks like a 5R4. What is it here? Yeah, there it is. 5R4. So this would be classified as the low voltage rectifier, which is probably around 450 or something like that in a unit like this, maybe even a little higher. So uh, that looks like a filter can behind there. So yeah, it says 600 on it. So probably around that somewhere in there. So the sides of this thing, they're screwed on the bottom here, but I can see on this other side by standing over here, it looks like it's spot welded. Man, this thing is probably responsible for some hernias in its time. So this looks like it's most likely spot welded. There's a solid, yeah, I can't feel anything. So there's nothing holding this in. So there's screws along the bottom, which would obviously hold this probably to the chassis. And of course this is gonna be one piece. So they actually, yeah, you can, yeah, they painted this on this device. So um, I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can maybe even see up front here. So they've put two different colors on here. I don't, it looks like safety orange, you know, construction site orange or something on the side. It looks factory, pardon the movement of the camera, but if you look closely here, you can see that they've actually got paint on the edges. So they painted this a different color on this and it all looks uniform too. So. Uh, in a restoration of this device, I don't know if I'd want to go with that color 
you know, it's just, I don't know, doesn't suit the device. I like the, uh, the wrinkle coat look to it, you know, maybe the whole thing in wrinkle coat or maybe the side silver or something like that, hammer tone silver, and then this with a black wrinkle coat. Um, I don't know, I'll have to figure that out. You can leave your comments below because this is definitely going to receive a restoration. So getting inside this thing is going to be rather difficult, I think, just because I, the chassis probably have to come out of the bottom. So I think the knobs would probably have to be removed here or something like that. I'll just move this around so maybe you can see a little better in there. You see the long shafts here that are running up to the knobs, right? So I have a feeling that this, this actually comes in from the bottom. So let's see here. Did I mention this thing was heavy? So it looks like we're gonna probably gonna have to come in from the bottom. So give me a moment. Oh, there's not very many screws on here. So give me a moment, I'll get those screws out and we'll take a look at what's in the underside here. All right, what have we got? Whoa! There are some parts and pieces inside this. Look at this thing, it is packed. Friendly juices from this thing. What did that come from? So that is about this area here. So probably one of these bathtub capacitors. There's a reason that they call them bathtub caps, right? So, wow. This is going to be an in-depth restoration. There are a lot of parts and pieces in here. Is that a split right down the middle there? That would be a split down the center and possibly some goo leaking out unless it's just some odd cap with a little uh, button on the side of it. So lots of wax caps here. Hopefully you can see this as well as I can. I'll move you over and you can see all of the uh, wonderful parts and pieces in this. This transformer looks like it's probably oil filled. So it has the little seals and the little glass. You can see they've actually bonded glass in there. Very neat transformers. And uh, contrary to popular belief, those things almost never leak. So the little glass balls here with the, uh, the uh, little connections coming out. So big filter cans in here. Look at the size of those caps. These are huge for back in the day. These things are monsters. So lots and lots of parts and pieces all over the place. Solar, mm, sealed tight to keep the leakage in. There we go, solar caps. It's quite a mixture. So this has been uh, worked on quite a bit throughout time. So we have a combination of a newer cap down here. It's all split. 
And uh, when we actually go and do the restoration on this, I'll pull these little parts and pieces out and uh, we'll chip them apart and take a look. This one here feels like it's, uh, I could break pieces off it. So I don't want to interrupt any of this because uh, the restoration video will also be a, a fun thing to do. So we'll experience all of that. So it's a mixture of more modern parts. We've got old wax caps. We have what looks to be like dry electrolytics, bathtub style capacitors in here, uh, roundy style uh, resistors in here, you know, large old roundy style resistors, the large and the small. Ah, it has that nice aroma of transformer um, and possibly leaking fluids. Uh, let's see here. So we have uh, multi-position switches, one back here, one over here. So this has got a bunch of different caps on it. So probably the sweep, maybe the sweep speed selector for the scope. And a bunch of coax is running in here, so possibly attenuation going on down in here. It'd be really neat to uh, actually find a schematic if it's even possible. Again, if any of you recognize this, definitely leave a comment below with a model number. Ooh, that resistor is just toast. Okay, I know you can kind of see it behind the wiring harness there. Lift that up. Look at that resistor. That's actual wire. It's supposed to look like this. It's just burnt right off. So that has definitely gotten hot. This thing is like the Vito Lizer 2.0, maybe even worse. Wow. Well, now that we've seen what's in there, that looks like a real fun restoration. I'm looking forward to getting this thing working now. I'm up for a challenge. And uh, if this thing doesn't have challenge written all over it, I don't know what does. So. That's only part of the challenge. And after that is learning the device and then using it to fix things. That's the fun thing. So look at that. That might be a schematic. Maybe we have some, maybe we have some uh, information here. Well, it looks like somebody's modified this and maybe they've added this. Isn't that neat? Oh, and look at this. Somebody's been, uh, they've been uh, writing some stuff on here. Looks like they've been trying to work something out. Kind of interesting. So maybe this thing has had problems throughout time. So, Lots of solar seal tight caps in there. Man, this thing is impossible to move around. I like it when you find like documentation like this. Isn't that neat? Somebody actually spent the time way back when to draw that up. That's something I would have done. Okay, very new cap. Can it? Dangling in the breeze. Well, it's, yeah, yeah, I'd say it's dangling in the breeze. And uh, some more uh, solar sealed tight capacitors here. All over the place in there. So I'm beginning to think like there's, these here might actually be an original device in this. It kind of give me an idea of the date of this. So, and that almost looks like a saturable reactor. So maybe this thing does uh, an actual sweep alignment. Maybe it does something like that. Oh, that would be very neat if it did, you know, possible sweep alignment. So yeah, lots of transformers, a transformer here, possibly a choke up here or something. Another transformer, a choke there bunch of coils in here so this is definitely a tuned device for something and yeah hopefully you can see all this get the light up a little closer there so we got lots of bathtub caps not leaking anything no I'm not scared of what's inside them uh, let's see here got a bunch of wax caps that look like they're uh, oh this is kind of hanging in the breeze look at that resistor that probably went to there, eh? Right, something like that. I got a bunch of 
wax caps that look like they're just toast. So they've been hot, you can see they're hot on the ends. Or either that are hot on the hot in the middle it would be because there's still wax on the ends and the, the wax has come off of these. So all these wax caps are definitely shot. So this thing is, you know, definitely would not even fire up. I wouldn't want to fire it up. I would not want to damage that. Hopefully it isn't damaged now. Look at this thing. So hey, restoring this thing rivals a Halocrafter's SX28, doesn't it? Any of you that have done that know exactly what I'm talking about. So, anyways, yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. And uh, I wonder how much I can condense this down. So, on my end here, it's probably like a month's worth of restoration to condense down into, what, half an hour video? An hour video, something like that? Wow. So, let's take another look inside, take a look at the tubes. Because I'm going to have to actually, if I remove the screws on the side here, all right, it looks like what happens is these chassis drop out. You can see that they all have universal joints. So they all, they've all got universal joints here, right? See that? So everything is designed to be dropped out. And of course, you got wiring harnesses that are running, you know, from the front here. So all of this stuff has to be removed. Somewhat like the Vitalizer, this really looks like the, like the way that they would have designed a Supreme device way back when. So it really echoes Supreme, like the Vitalizer. But in order to get this thing out, uh, these chassis, you can see this chassis is fastened here. This is cha it, cha it actually fastens right here to this chassis. And then this is fastened what looks to be to the front somehow, maybe by the screws or something on the front. So all of the wiring, get this, service this thing, all of the wiring and you know, the shafts all have to be undone. Wires have to be desoldered to get these actual chassis out of here. So, because in order to get this down, right, you know, like this is all on top of it. So this all has to be, all has to be undone in order to get all of this out. <laughs> Restoration nightmare. So, uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. But it's, it's so neat. And it looks so good that it's definitely going to get it. So uh, this here would probably be a very in-depth restoration. So all of you that uh, that are uh, into longer restorations, this is uh, definitely going to be one of those videos. So anyways, again, oops, pardon the bump there. Let's uh, look inside and uh, I'll focus in on some of the tubes up front because this just taking this out right now is impossible. And then, uh, of course, I'm not doing the restoration right away on this thing. I'm still in a restoration right now. But, um, yeah, I don't want this thing laying in pieces all over the place. So, so let's take a look inside here again. I'll tip this up. Let's take a look. Nothing's going to get wrecked. Look at this. I'm not kidding. This thing is ridiculously heavy. The point where I don't even want to pinch my hands under it, you know? Okay, so let's take a closer look inside this thing. Hopefully we can see what's way up in there. And uh, maybe I can zoom you in. So you definitely got lots more tubes. You have some metal tubes up there. So we have some metal tubes here. Right. Oops, right there and there. And more metal tubes there. Look at all the tubes in this thing. This thing's just loaded with tubes, right? So, lots and lots of parts and pieces in there. Is there a little packet down in here? This thing is loaded with little, little surprises. You see a little package down in there? I saw that off to the side. Let's see if I can get my hand in there and get that out. What is this? Wouldn't this be nice if this was the info? got going on invoice enclosed Taylor Pearson and Carson hey it's missing an L doesn't that look like that would have been expensive you know that is inside here what do we got going on oh just screws I'm going to have to see if I can find any information on this. So, yeah, well, what do you do? 
So there it is. That's as deep as I can really get inside this thing. You know, it's, my camera's going to try and focus on things it shouldn't really focus on. I'm going to focus on there. Yeah, so you can see all the tubes, more transformers up front. And I can get this thing to focus properly. Maybe not on the wire. There we go. Tuning capacitor right there, transformer up there. So we do have some fun ahead of us in the actual restoration video of this device. Let's see if I can move the focus over here so we can see up over in there. Yeah, lots of tubes. 6A7 up the front there. The metal tubes, one there and one there. A bunch of glass tubes. CRT right up in here. So, yeah, not much to see in the top there. If you can see that, I'd have to completely move this around, but not much to see, just a bunch of shafts running up to the top, and that's it. Not really much on the top, just the CRT right there. So, well, there it is. That's what we're up against. Looks like I bought that... Uh, bread oven that paint oven just in time fitting this thing inside there to cheer wrinkle coat is like what take up that whole lower oven so anyways yeah just ridiculously heavy this thing is um, yeah so when it comes down to the restoration we'll do this piece by piece i am so looking forward to using this thing on the bench so the vitalizer didn't get much time because the lab moved right after that was done but uh, we'll have to put this up against the vitalizer. Man, this is sharp pieces here, there, and everywhere. Thing is just designed to maim. So there it is. A restoration coming in the very near future. Any hints or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Are you interested in learning more about electronics, both modern and antique electronics alike? I teach electronics in a way that's very easy to understand, complete with circuits for you to build, both modern and antique, and at this point, over 200 videos for you to learn from. If you're interested, or this does sound interesting to you, you're definitely gonna wanna check out my electronics course on Patreon. It's very affordable, and I'm there to pass my electronics knowledge on to you. I'll put the link just below the video's description under the Show More tab, and I'll pin the link at the top of the comments section. So if you click on one of those links, it'll take you right there. If you enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. If you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe and tap the bell symbol. That way you'll be notified as soon as I post a brand new video. I've got lots of great stuff coming. All right, until next time, take care. Bye for now.